all of me Smeagils Sam Possible. I'm Migas. My name is Taffrey16. Welcome back to another episode of Reading Your Comments. It is Thursday, Wednesday for you on Patreon, so let's read some comments. Okay, this opening comment is really, really fucking long, but it answers a lot of the questions I was wondering about the Inbetweeners 2 movie, so we're gonna read it. Here we go. Uh, I'm in a bit of an Inbetweeners stand, so maybe I can shed some light for you. Uh, regarding Will and Neil's girlfriends from the first movie, they talk about their respective breakups in two lead scenes, which were featured on the movie's uh, DVD, second movie's DVD release. No idea why these scenes didn't make the final cut, and I haven't seen them in a while, but if I remember correctly, during the scene where they're sitting at the pub in the Harry Potter fancy dress, Neil explains that he and Lisa weren't seeing each other anymore, no reason given, but they still exchanged nudes, which he shows off to the other boys. Uh, Will mentions Allison. Uh, when they're on a plane to Australia, a scene that features Neil destroying the plane's toilet with his poo. Uh, Will figures out by take, talking to the others that she's blocked him on Facebook and is now seeing a new, better looking guy. Again, uh, no reason for their breakup, okay. Uh, I just assume that Will's relationship with Allison is similar to his one with Charlotte, that he was just it was just her rebound playing, uh, and then it was just her rebound rebound play thing after another guy messed her around. I guess the same applies to Katie in a way. I uh, mean, it's just Will's type. That's fair enough. Uh, I know Lucy turning psycho bothered a lot of people, but I think it was believable enough. Guessing her change uh, was some sort of reference to holiday romances going sour. Like, a lot of people can seem cool when you first meet them, especially uh, when they're away from reality. But they're just normal when normal everyday life assumes you start getting through a picture of them. I'm in a major minority of actually thinking I like the second movie better than the first. The end felt like more like a true in-betweeners movie and like the high Hollywood style happy ending in the first, uh, which is why Jane rejecting Jay didn't bother me. Uh, the only thing I was key on is how badly Will was treated by like everyone. It's just depressing seeing a character who is so well-meaning and desperate for acceptance uh, being dumped on so constantly, uh, even by people who are supposed to be his friends. I think that uh, there's something personal to me that I was definitely a will when I was younger, sans the briefcase. My apologies for the massive comment. Love reaction videos, by the way. Ever react wish ever reactors, reactors, reactors would take time to watch the whole thing instead of dipping into clip reels. The jokes aren't funny in isolation without knowing any characters. Thank you for taking the time to do it properly. Well, thank you for the comment. Now let's dissect this a little bit. I'm glad there at least was deleted scenes of explaining what happened uh, to Lisa and Allison. It's still it's still not good enough, and I still don't think it does their characters justice, but I think that at the very least should have been in the movie to give some sort of explanation instead of just glossing over it like it didn't happen, like it did in the final cut. Um, Allison looking for a rebound? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. She did start going, but, but a flaw in your logic is that in the first movie, she was interested in Will before she broke up with the other guy. She even made that pact with him to have sex with him if he hadn't in a year, while she was still dating that guy. She, and sure it was with the stipulation that she wasn't still dating the guy, but she wouldn't have made that pact if she wasn't interested in him already. So that's a flaw in your logic. Um, but uh, Lucy turning psycho, Barbara Lepie was believable enough. I, it, it could have been, but I still think it was lazy. I'm sorry, I think it was just a lazy gag to do a lol domestic abuse, you know, storyline. I, I just, I think it was lazy. I'm sorry. Um, better than the first, I definitely disagree. Um, and he, here's the thing. Well, you said Will well-meaning. I don't know about all that, but um, he is definitely desperate for acceptance, that's for sure. Um, I don't think he's a good person, though. I don't think any of them are good people other than... I, I don't know if I can necessarily call Neil a bad person just because Neil doesn't have any brain cells, you know? I think Neil is just too stupid to be called a bad person. I just think Neil doesn't know any better. The other, the other of them know better. They're just not good people. Um, and the Hollywood style ending, I wouldn't consider it a Hollywood style ending. I would consider it development in a proper wrap-up, to be honest, as far as the first movie goes. I, I think... The problem with this show, especially ending the third series, is that it followed the same... You begin to notice it followed the f same uh, formula every episode. Like, you'll see this if you haven't seen it already. You can see it on Daily Motion or when I re-upload to YouTube. I think it was episode 12. I pretty much correctly predicted what was going to happen throughout the entire episode before it happened because it was obvious. It's the same... It becomes the same formula every time, you know? They get in a scenario, it looks like it's going to go bad, it might go good, and then at the end, it all, all the shit hits the fan, you know? It's the same formula every time. And it's a credit to the writers that they're able to take the same formula every time and we're able to still consistently make it funny. That's definitely, a, uh, you know, a uh, testament to the writers. But it was still stale, you know? And I thought the first movie 
and the change of formula was a good wrap up and I feel like they just reverted all the characters and reverted everything with the second movie. So, uh, but thank you for all the information. Um, I got to disagree on a lot of the points, but I appreciate it. You might want to consider some of these for future reaction videos. Okay, let's see if I've done any of these. Absolutely fabulous. Nope, haven't done it yet. Bandorm, yes. Dad's Army, I've done. Dear John, have not done. Dinner Ladies, have not done. Doctor in the House, have not done. Ever Decreasing Circles, not done that. Fault Towers, have not done that yet. Gavin and Stacey, I have done. Uh, the Good Life, no, not yet. Uh, Hancock's Half Hour, not yet. Uh, Alan Partridge, not yet. Just Good Friends, not yet. Last Summer Wine, not yet. Open All Hours, not yet, but it was in a uh, poll recently, I think. Phoenix Knights, not yet, but soon. Please Sir, not yet. Yet Minister, not yet, was in a poll recently, though. Young Woods, not yet, but also soon. Um, so, yeah. Ben Dorm, Dad's Army, Gavin and Stacey from that list I've done. I'm pretty sure I have most, if not all, of these in my folder. So, Yes Minister was in a poll recently. Could see it coming soon. Phoenix Knights will either come... I don't know if I can fit it in this month. I might try to, though. So either this month or at the very least next month. Uh, Gavin and Stacey, I'll do a sequel to in the future. Faulty Towers, uh, probably in the future. Um, and Last Summer Wine I've talked about recently. Alan Parker, probably in the future as well. The rest, I don't know. Have you ever done a royal family? Because uh, the ones you're reacting to are quite niche and I'm missing your reactions. Apart from what I lied to you in 10 Cats, I don't watch any of their programs. Well, just because you don't watch them doesn't mean they're niche. Like, the in-betweeners isn't niche. You know, especially off the views I've gotten that. I don't think Father Ted is niche either. Um, but uh, Royal Family is funny because that's like a long... For those of you who have uh, been watching the channel for a while, you know, it's a very long-running gag because it's the first video in my reaction folder. There is... I have a reaction video folder on my computer that contains 529 videos. And the first video ever put in that folder was the Royal Family. And I still haven't done it. <laughs> I've had it in that folder since late 2018. And I haven't done it. And I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I've never actually gotten to it. One of these days, man. One of these days. The bedroom scene in that Peter K thing is parody of Apocalypse Now. Peter says, I love the smell of raspberry in the morning. Taking off, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Okay. I haven't actually seen Apocalypse Now. I, I know of that... Uh, that line because it's very highly parodied and I, I know of Apocalypse Now. I haven't actually seen it though. The funny thing is Softy's hard stuff at the end was a real adult video show in Bolton. That makes me happy because I literally cannot think of a better name for an adult video show. Adult video store. Softy's hard stuff. That's just tremendous. Peter K looks like a bad UK Ric Flair tribute act in this. To be fair, Ric Flair looks like a bad Ric Flair tribute act nowadays. Interesting fact, the narrator on these was the actor who played Manuel in Faulty Towers. Faulty Towers I really need to do, I was just talking about it, but it's really something I need to get to. I might try to fit that in next month. Hopefully I don't forget, but I've, it, it's, it seems like a very popular show and I think it's, See, considering I've done a lot of popular shows, I think it's actually pretty surprising that I haven't done it yet because I have this list, right? It was, um, it, it, it's, uh, I have it saved here. It's a ITV poll, and no, a BBC did the poll in 2004. It's a bit old, obviously, but 2004, they did an online public vote to rank the top 100 British sitcoms. Uh, and again, this is 16 years old, but uh, here's the top five. Only Fools and Horses, number one. Two, Blackadder. Three, The Vicar of Dibley. Four, Dad's Army. Five, Faulty Towers. So I have done the top four, but I have not done Faulty Towers yet. But we need to get to it. You joke about if he's gonna stab him, but check out Glasgow Ice Cream Wars uh, from the 1980s. Uh, oh yeah, she need to do Phoenix Knights as well. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But the Ice Cream Wars, I happen to have that here. So, yeah, uh, is it Glasgow or Glasgow? Or is it? I I'm not entirely sure of the pronunciation. I've seen different people pronounce it different ways. I'm sure there's a correct one though. So the Ice Cream Wars was a turf war in the East End of Glasgow in Scotland in the 80s between rival criminal organizations selling drugs and stolen goods from ice cream vans. Van operators were involved in frequent violence and intimidation tactics. A driver and his family were killed in an arson attack that resulted in a 20-year court battle. The conflicts generated widespread public outrage and earned a uh, Strathclad police nickname of the Serious, Cr Serious Chime Squad, a pun on the Serious Crime Squad, for its perceived failure to address them. Wow. So, wait, it went on 20 years. When did the court case end then? Wow. Uh, yeah, it went until like. Did it go into the 2000s then? If it was in the 80s? I don't know. I'm not. Oh, here we go. It went to 2004. Holy shit. 2004 is when I, it was uh, finally, uh, finally ended out. 
Um, they ended up getting freed again, I guess. Wow. Over ice cream, man? My god. Well, it wasn't over ice cream. It was rival gangs, but with the ice cream vans, though? My god. Dr. David Bruce Banner was the name of the Hulk in the 78 TV show. Ah, okay. Need to watch more of the 78 TV show. I honestly didn't even remember that. Well, good Marvel lore for me, I guess. I'm gonna lump these two comments together because they're the exact antithesis of each other. This is Peter K at his best. His stand-up is awful, but I'll straighten into classes of him if I talk about that. He's a much better comedy writer and performer. Followed by, people actually like this. First time I've ever seen it and it's tragic. I like his stand-up, but this is worse than bad. You know, it's an interesting argument because hey, you ever have a comedian like that? Maybe you feel about that way about Peter K. Clearly these two do. Um, is that sometimes people aren't as good as one comedy as another. Like sometimes people are better stand up but not good at scripted comedy and more than often not it's uh, the reverse of that. People are good at scripting comedy but not at stand up. A good example of that that I can bring up is George Lopez. Um, I don't know if it ever had any kind of recognition in the UK but there's a show here in 2000s called The George Lopez Show starring George Lopez obviously. It was scripted. It was a tremendous show. Incredibly popular. Um, the it was popular when it aired and became even more popular when they did reruns on Nick at Night, which they may still do to this day. I used to watch it every night. It's one of my favorite shows ever. And he's incredibly funny in that show. Um, and thinking that he was funny, um, I used to have HBO and it had a whole bunch of stand up specials on HBO. And there were two stand up specials I always used to watch on HBO. It was uh, Chris Rock, Bigger and Blacker from 1998. He did the Apollo Theater in New York and then Killing Him Softly. Uh, Dave Chappelle from 2000 in Washington, D.C. I used to watch those two all the time, uh, and just those two, but I started browsing more to stand-up specials on HBO, and turns out there was a George Lopez one on there. I'm like, oh, okay, I love George Lopez show. I love George Lopez. I'll watch this. And it was awful. <laughs> like, it was... His stand-up was so bad, and I was so surprised, because he was so funny in the scripted show, but his live stand-up was just... It was so bad. It was really, really, really bad. Um, but I, that's just how it is, man. It's not, it's, people can be funny in one thing, but not necessarily funny in the other. Can't lie, bro. Uh, that's probably my favorite solution to how to show the shows you've used. I'm not a fan of using ads on Daily Motion. He's talking about how I split up Doctor Who into five parts. Um, yeah, I mean, if we do, we're going to do more Doctor Who, and that's how we're going to have to do it in the future. It's like that. It's by breaking it up into five parts. Because that's just how it is. Because uh, I can't put the full thing on Daily Motion. Again, I don't like the ads on Daily Motion ever. I don't have any control over that though. I don't control the ad placement, unfortunately. Um, but I'm glad that people seem to be susceptible to the five parts thing. It didn't get much in terms of viewership. I guess I didn't expect that, to be fair. But at least I was able to put it on YouTube. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, that's true, buddy. I wonder where it's five o'clock as I'm recording this. Let's see. As I'm currently recording this. Where is it five o'clock? The worldwide clock. Here we go. Um, let's see. Is it 5 p.m. anywhere? It's got to be 5 p.m. somewhere. Well, at least like five, it's 10:42 as I'm talking, so it's got to be 5:42 somewhere. Let's see. As I'm currently recording right now, it is 5:42 in Iceland. That's a fun fact. Doctor Who Father's Day is a good episode, but just heads up, uh, two episodes uh, following are two-parter, so please don't leave us waiting uh, too long for part two. Two-parter introduces to a new character somewhat likable. Oh, that's good. Uh, who has his own spinoff called Torchwood, but you can, should wait until completing the first series to watch that. Fun fact, the letters of Doctor Who spell Torchwood. Well, that's a fun fact. Um, and thank you for letting me know that, so I can know to do them in quick succession. I'll probably just do it may maybe one, like a week after the other, like I did with uh, four and five. Um, so thank you for knowing, letting me know. L always let me know when there's a two-parter and there's two episodes that need to be doing, no, done quick succession. By the way, I wish I could do them all in one video, but that would mean like a ten-part video. So you know how it is. It can't just be like dog. It can't just be like Father Ted, unfortunately. But I'd be I just split up all into ten parts if I were to do it like that. Um, but yeah, Torchwood. Maybe after we finish the first series, we'll look into that as well. I do have an episode. Hey, Taff316, Zach Wright from England here again. It says Karen Wright, but okay. Uh, it's my 21st birthday on April 17th. I really appreciate if you could do the following American Racks 2 videos on my birthday. CBBC is trapped. <laughs> Give me episodes and everything. Um, Bamzuki Street Rules. Brum King of Thieves. Jungle Run. Uh, by the way, series one of Susie's Trap the Voice is voiced by Ian Cuff. Uh, da, da, da. Please respond to this comment when you have time to, and please let me know how many of my quests you can do on my birthday. Uh, well, 
Um, I hope you have a good birthday. This is the most presumptuous thing I've ever seen in my life, though. I gotta be honest. I can't just make special exceptions for individual people. And on top of that, I don't even think I have a reaction video scheduled for the 17th. Let me see. I had one on the 7th. Let's see. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, there'll be one on the 16th, but not on the 17th. I hope you have a good birthday, though. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for another episode of Reading Your Comments. Per usual, if you want a chance to get your comment read next week, just comment down below in the comment section. The comments of this video were pulled from Reading Your Comments 70, American Rex, Doctor Who, American Rex to Peter Kafing. Um, and was that it? Yeah, I think so. So this video and the next two reaction videos are the places to comment if you want a chance to get your comment read next week. Uh, but that is going to do it. It was me for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, be sure to like it. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, where I stream every single day, my second channel, Free Skinny Views, my Twitter. If you want to follow me on my Patreon, if you want to support me, or my Vimeo, my Vimeo, my Daily Motion, all those things are down in the description down below. Thank you to all 38 of my patrons uh, for supporting me on my channel. The reason I say that is I literally just got a new Patreon just now as I'm recording this. Uh, Lewis, uh, as of eight minutes ago, as I'm recording this, thank you for being my new patron. And thank you to all 38 of you. I appreciate you. You're all named in the description down below. Uh, also in the description, you can find a link to the community Reddit as well as the daily schedule. With all that being said, though, my name is Taffrix Team. This has been another episode of Reading Your Comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.